one 1977 Quest magazine was so leftist and socialist that it was even unacceptable in New York City, which is the most liberal city in the world, according to New York Times magazine. Another connection of the worldwide church of God with Gnosticism and Babylonianism is that there were advertisements in Quest magazine, full-page advertisements by an Everett House publishing company. An example of the publishing house's uh, literature, they specialized in occult literature. Here's some of the titles that appeared in that magazine that you could order by mail from Everett House Publishing Company. One book was called Occult Dark Dimensions. Another book was Strange Seed. Another book was telling unmarried couples how they could live together and handle their finances. That's everything against the church's doctrines of fidelity in marriage and no sexual activity until you're married. Another book was entitled Advocating Oriental Mysticism. Right in a Church of God literature. One article was about a man having a child born to him by a pig. Bestiality which is condemned in the Bible. Once again, we look behind the scenes to see who it was that was advising the literature offered in this publication. A man by the name of Stanley Rader, 33rd degree Freemason. Here's what he believes. Mr. Stanley Rader, who was elevated to an evangelist in that church, believes in the occult and witchcraft. Here is a direct quote out of the Pasadena newspaper, Pasadena, California, when a newspaper reporter asked him about his birth date. He said, I was born August 14th, 1930. I'm a Leo. What does that mean? What does it mean to you when he said, I'm a Leo? Isn't that one of the signs of the Zodiac? He guided his entire life by the Zodiac, just like Ronald Reagan and Nancy Reagan. My Bible says that that is an absolute abomination. And yet here was an entire church taken by this Babylonian system. There was also a project started in the Middle East or thought up by the Worldwide Church of God. It was called the Interfaith Temple of Mount Sinai. This was to be three temples built as one. They would be side by side connected to each other. One of the temples would be for the Jews to worship in, one would be for the Christians, and one would be for the Muslims. Three different gods now. And the Worldwide Church of God planned to build it and finance it with the tithes and offerings of the church people. And they would dedicate it to three different gods. Babylonianism. Menachem Begin and Anwar Sadat were of Israel and Egypt that was going to help in this program. And Anwar Sadat died, so it scrapped the program. This was nothing more than a part of the ecumenical movement to produce a world religion through the World Council of Churches and the National Council of Churches, which would help fund it. Gnosticism. That's the connection with the Worldwide Church of God. One more. Really, there's four more, but one more connection is that there was a lawsuit filed against the Worldwide Church of God and coming to their rescue was the National and World Council of Churches, both of them communist front organizations, and also another mild-mannered group of individuals called the American Civil Liberties Union, 100% communist. They are the ones who defended the Worldwide Church of God in that lawsuit. There is another connection with Babylonianism. A 15th connection. 
was that Ambassador College was to be involved in an archaeological dig to uncover ancient Babylon. They were to do it in connection with the Crest Foundation. The head of the Crest Foundation was a man by the name of Franklin Nulty. He was the head also of an international bank, a member of the Council on Foreign Relations that was founded by Colonel Edward Mandel House, a socialist communist. Yet another connection of Babylonianism with a modern-day church that believes in the covenant of the living God. A sixteenth connection was that a Mr. Robert Kuhn had a concept which he sold to Mr. Herbert Armstrong that the brain in man was good and that man himself, his human nature, was good. There was nothing wrong with man except that we would tune in on a wavelength that came through the air of Satan. But if you turn the wavelength off, human beings were good. That is nothing but Gnosticism, socialism, humanism, communism, saying that if the environment is right, then all humanity would live in a utopia and there would never be a problem. That's what international socialism and communism is working for today to change the environment of man because we're good, we're just products of a bad environment. Change the environment and mankind will be at peace and utopia. A seventeenth and a last connection that I'll mention today is the profit motive versus the value motive of the worldwide church of God changed. They changed from being by living, by values, by God's Word, they changed their attitude to the profit motive. They had to produce large numbers of people and large amounts of money. Numbers and money became more important to them than the valuable lives of individuals. Brethren, I want to tell you right now, I'd rather have ten people sitting on these first two rows who are sincere and dedicated to God than two hundred people at the Feast of Tabernacles who are not dedicated and who have the wrong motive for being here. I want quality. I want people to dedicate their lives to the kingdom of God to help humanity. I couldn't care less about money except we have to have it to operate. That's all. God will not accept anyone who remains in Babylon. And when we sucker up to the internationalists and those who are controlling Babylon, we're enmeshed in it. God will leave us. We cannot become involved in it. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. Revelation 3, verse 14. This is one of the letters to the churches. Notice what it says now. This is the end of the age. Jesus is the one doing the talking. I'll start in verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, that's our Savior, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Jesus was the beginner of the creation of God the Father. I know thy works that you are neither cold nor hot, I would that you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I'll spew you out of my mouth. What makes this church, the worldwide church of God, lukewarm? Because, here's why, this is Jesus. You say, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing they had so little need for Jesus Christ and God the Father, they changed their gospel to a humanistic, socialistic, collectivistic gospel. And know not that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. They must come out of Babylon or they will go through the plagues of God. Remember, 
When I started this message, I read my first scripture in Revelation 18, verse 3 and 4. As I'm turning there, I only want to mention that I would not have given this message at all because I, under no circumstances, ever talk about another church organization, its leadership, in a derogative term, unless I have information that I know of that will help someone in their personal life because they're being deceived. I would never do it, except you and I need to know that if it happened to them... Can it happen to us? Verse 3 and 4. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. The system. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. This international economic system run by a cartel of a few men. And I heard another voice coming from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people that you be not partakers of her sin, and that you receive not of her plagues. Brethren, as I close this today, I'm going to stand before you, I'm going to confess to you that I know, and I am not ashamed, Jesus Christ called me to be his minister. I am going to be that minister. I am going to cry aloud and spare not, I am not going to reserve anyone's feelings, my own feelings or yours. If we are engaged in sin that can lead us into Babylonianism, I'm going to speak it. And then it's up to us to repent. God says, come out. If we stay out, we don't have to worry about coming out, do we? I hope you won't dislike me and hate me for it, but I'm going to preach the truth and I'm going to do it with all of my heart. God Almighty expects it. If I am a minister of God, I cannot let any one of you or anybody else influence me to tone down the message to salve our feelings. I cannot. Don't hate me and dislike me for it. Love me for it. I ask you to do that. I need your arms to hold me up. This is the most lonely job there is. I'm telling you, it is. I need you.